Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right into today's video. So for today's video, I have something very, very exciting. I am trying a new brand to me and today I'm going to be trying Knot Polish for the very first time. I have never used any products from Knot Polish on camera or on camera so this is my very first time trying the Knot Polish brand and I am super excited. So they were very generous and sent over a huge PR package for me to try some of their favorite products and also their new white Lux Pro nail lamp which I am also so so excited for. I am very very thankful and blessed to receive this package from Knot Polish. Um, like I said, I've never used Knot Polish before, so this is kind of going to be my first impressions. I'm going to be using the products, um, doing a nail set, and then I'm also going to be unboxing this huge PR package, and I just wanted to unbox it so I could show you guys everything that they did send over to me. So I'm going to be showing everything that was included in the box, but I'm not going to be using everything. I will be doing more videos using Knot Polish products. I really loved these products. The packaging was also top tier. I also wanted to mention I do not yet have a discount code with Knot Polish, but um, if I do get a discount code, I will leave it down below in the description box. That way you can save a little bit of money off your purchase, but currently I do not have a discount code. All of these products I will be linking down below in the description box, also the products that I used in today's nail set. But let's go ahead and quickly, well, not really quickly because this was a huge PR package they sent over, so the unboxing proportion of this video is kind of lengthy. I did try to go through it as quick as I possibly could, but I was just so excited and I really wanted to check out these new products. So starting off with the product that I was most excited about is the new Not Polished White Rechargeable LED Nail Lamp. So they do have this in red, but this is their brand new um, ivory white color. So it is an LED nail lamp. It is perfect for any nail length, so ranging from short, medium, to XXL nails. It also has 39 high quality LED lights with 100 watts, which is so amazing. This nail lamp is very powerful to ensure your sets are fully cured, including the hard to reach spots like our thumbs and our pinkies. So with 100 watts, this nail lamp is definitely going to get you a full cure. It also is a cordless and rechargeable nail lamp, so the lamp will give you 8-10 to 10 hours worth of unplugged battery life, which is a lifesaver because I don't like cords and I'm sure you guys are the same way. Having so many things plugged in when you're doing your nails, it can be very hectic with having all of the different cords in your way, but with something that is rechargeable, it's super nice. You can charge it up while you're not doing your nails, and then when you're ready to do your nails, you can unplug plug it and you have a full battery which will last you 8 to 10 hours. It also has a LCD screen on the back with four preset curing times, 10 second, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and 90 seconds. Before I talk any more about the features, I do just quickly want to mention that I did already unbox this nail lamp on my Instagram before filming the YouTube video. I didn't technically try out the product yet, so it is still really my first impressions and first time using this product, but I did film an Instagram reel, so the packaging of everything is slightly tampered with, by me. I removed the blue film on the tray. I also like took the um, little wrapper off of the uh, like plugging cord and I just wanted to mention that I didn't want anyone to think like it's going to come that way for you. You are going to get a clean untouched packaging with the blue film on the like tray. The cord's going to be wrapped up nicely and everything like that. So I did just quickly want to mention that if you aren't following me on Instagram, my Instagram is Nailed by Brandy and you can definitely go over there and see the reel I came up with 
for this nail lamp. I think I got some pretty cool shots of it and overall I love the look of this nail lamp. It is so stunning. It has such a sleek design and I don't know. I don't have the red one but if I would have to choose it would be a very hard choice because I do really love the color of this ivory white one but I think that the red nail lamp would also be super stunning as well. So with the nail lamp, we had the nail lamp, of course, the warranty card. Here is just the little instruction pamphlet. Of course, before using this product, you will want to read over this. If you want to see anything that's, that this instruction pamphlet did say, you can pause to read that if you would like. We also have the charger cord here, so this end will go into the wall and then this end will be plugged into the nail lamp, which I will show that. And then of course, we also have this removable tray. This removable tray is absolutely great for when you want to do your toenails. You can remove the tray, you can even leave the tray. It is also easy to clean. And that also leads me to another thing. This nail lamp is acetone resistant, so you are able to clean it up. You can also use it as like kind of like a palette if you would like because you are able to wipe away your gel polishes because it is acetone resistant. Another thing I wanted to mention is the nail lamp does turn on automatically when you put your hand in, so that is another nice great feature. Like I already mentioned about the preset curing times, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and 90 seconds. That is on the back here along with the large LCD screen, the carrying handle for easy mobility. It also has the plug-in port where you will charge up the nail lamp, and then it has the power on and off switch. So I really like the design. One thing I do want to mention, because I'm not a nail tech and because I only do my own nails, having the buttons and the screen on the back isn't really super convenient for me because I am not able to see the screen. I'm not really able to see the buttons when I am curing my own hands. So I personally do not really like that. It is more intended for people who are doing clients since your clients will be the one putting their hands in. For me, honestly, it isn't a huge deal because overall, just the look of this nail lamp is absolutely gorgeous, but that is something I did just want to mention since the buttons and the screen will be on the back of the nail lamp. So this nail lamp is currently available on the Not Polish website. I'm hoping it doesn't sell out by the time I get this video up, but it is currently on sale for $239, so I will be linking it down below in the description box in case you do want to get your hands on it. I'm not sure how fast it is going to sell out, but I do know that a lot of new products from Not Polish tend to sell out very quickly. So if you do want to get your hands on this, I would suggest running as fast as you can to see if it is available still by the time I upload this video. So as you saw on the back on the LCD screen, it was blinking and flashing. That is only because the way it records and picks up on camera. But in person, it will not flash like this. It does show the timer button and then it also shows the battery. So when it is have a when it does have a fully charged battery, all of the little blocks on the battery will stay steady. When you plug it in, it will charge and the battery level will move up and down. And then obviously when the battery is charged, all of them will stay steady. Very self-explanatory, you all know what that means. Also, when the lamp is on, the not polished, the NP on the top of the lamp, it is actually a light. It was kind of hard for me to pick up on camera because I did have all of my lights on but it does glow and I do really like that. Another feature that I do quickly want to mention about the nail lamp is that the inside is fully mirrored, so it really helps you get a super good full cure because everything, the light is reflecting, and you are just really going to be able to get that full cure with the 100 watt, the 39 bulbs, and also having the mirror reflect on the inside of the nail lamp. So that was the nail lamp. I am, again, very thankful they sent that over to me. 
I am very blessed and I love it. I think it is so gorgeous. I think it is so sleek and I loved curing my nails in it. The only con that I did have with it was that the buttons and the screen was on the back but honestly I don't mind that at all because I still think it is something very nice and just looks really nice on my nail desk. If you do want any more information about the not polished nail lamp I recommend clicking the link down below in the description box and going to the link for the actual product listing. But we are ready to move in and check out these other items that were sent over. So that first item was a matte top coat in a 15 ml bottle. I've heard a lot of good things about the not polished matte top coat. I did end up trying it in today's nail set and yes, it is amazing. Just wait until you see what it looks like. It was so nice. I love that matte top coat and honestly, it is probably my favorite matte top coat. I've only used it once though, so I'm not 100% sure, but I did really love the matte finish it left on the nails. The next item here is a white gel liner. This is in, in a 10 ml bottle. One thing I need to say real quick is the red for the packaging is gorgeous. I love the red. I think it is so stunning, so sleek, and I just don't have any other bottles that look like this. I am just so amazed. I love the red. I feel like it is such a gorgeous color, and just the way it has that chrome effect to it, I think it is amazing packaging. Not polished packaging is definitely a 10 out of 10 for me. Not only the packaging for everything that goes into like the box, the um, paper, the packaging peanuts, everything like that, but actually taking a look at the packaging for the gel bottles, the nail lamp, everything like that, it is still super gorgeous. So that last gel liner was a black gel liner and also a 10 ml bottle, but I just kind of compared it to the first bottle. I'm assuming that it is from a different collection since the bottles were different, but I thought it was very nice that they sent over a black and a white gel liner for me to try. Those colors are very popular for French tips, so having those is really nice. It also will help to, for me to see the quality of their black and their white gel polish. The next items they sent over was this box of their two-in-one powders. So these powders can be used as dip powder or acrylic powder. They are in two ounce jars and again this packaging, ooh, it is so clean, so nice. I love the red. I just, I love it so much. That chrome looks so amazing. It is a little bit hard to record with the chrome effect like that because it loves to pick up all of my lights and my phone and my face so if you see a little glimpse of me just say hi and move on um, it is a little bit difficult for me to film with having this like mirrored effect but I do love it I think the packaging is very nice this is definitely something that I want to display I don't want it to be hidden away because it is really nice quality packaging I have not tried these powders yet, but I am definitely going to be trying them because they are a two-in-one powder. Let me know down in the comment section if you want to see me use them as acrylic or if you want to see me use them as dip powder first. I would really love to try these um, both ways, but let me know down below which way you guys would like for me to try them first. So I did forget about the names for the powders, but I do show the name. It is on the bottom of each powder, and you also have a number as well. This one here, Nude Panther, I have heard so many good things about this color. I believe that it is their top number one seller for their powders. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. I'm really excited to try this color. Like I said, I've heard so many good things about it and I just think it looks like a beautiful color. I do know that me opening these up, opening the seals, and showing you the color isn't super helpful because picking it up with a bead of 
with monomer, getting the bead on the acrylic brush, or swatching it as dip powder. It can look slightly different than how it looks in the jar, but I, like I said, I didn't really want to swatch the colors because this video was also super long. I wanted to show the products really as quick as I possibly could. That way I could also try the products and use the products in a nail set to not only get my first impression, but to also actually try the products out as well. So I do apologize for not swatching these, but again, I'm going to be using these products again. I loved everything from the packaging to the quality, so I will be wanting to use these products again, especially these two-in-one powders. We are finally down to the last couple of items that they sent over to me. This was also one of those items that I was super excited about. As you guys may know, I have been absolutely obsessed with doing gel extensions, and this is actually their gel x um, kit or gel extension kit they also did send over their um, another nail shape length i believe it was long square but in the kit they included the medium almond the kit also includes a 15 ml glossy top coat i've also heard a lot of good things about this top coat i really loved the consistency of it and again i did use it in today's video and loved it all of these bottles are 15 ml by the way. This next bottle is the actual gel tip extension glue. So this is a gel product. They call it their press it and that is what you will use to apply the nail tips. This kit also includes their matte top coat which I thought was pretty cool because you can try their glossy and their matte top coat and it all comes in this one kit. And the last liquid that you get is the Triple X Bond, which is their acid-free primer. This can be used for acrylics or also gel nails, and it is also in a 15 ml bottle. So we have the matte top coat, the glossy top coat, the primer, and also the press it glue gel, which you will use to apply the nail tips. So they sent over the medium almond and also the long square to me. In today's video, I'm going to be trying the medium almond nail tips, but I will be doing another video coming up where I'm going to be trying the long square. They do have some different lengths and shapes available, such as long coffin, coffin XL, stiletto XL, long almond and then they also of course have the long square and medium almond i'm not sure if they have any other lengths or shapes available for the medium almond box you do get 600 nail tips and these are soak off they are also a soft gel nail tip and we get 11 different sizes zero being the largest and nine being the smallest I really liked the quality of these nail tips. I picked one up and I was honestly having a hard time bending it. Something I will say about these nail tips though is that the cuticle area isn't as thin as I do like the cuticle area to be on my nail tips. It is still thin enough where you will be able to file it before applying it or after applying it and still get that seamless sealed cuticle look. But I feel like with these nail tips, because it isn't very thin near the cuticle, I feel like definitely you will need to do some filing either before or after applying them because they are just a little bit thicker. They are thicker at the free edge though, and like I mentioned, I did have a hard time bending it. I was able to bend it in half and get the white line down the center, and then I was easily able to remove that white line and um, the nail shape go back to the way it was before. I am not going to be really showing these long square nail tips because I'm going to be doing a separate video, but they did also send those over. And for the long square nail tips, you actually only get 360 of them instead of 600 like the medium almond. So I do think that they have just, you get the number of nail tips depends on the length of the nails. So with this kit, you will get to choose one nail shape and length, of course, and then you will get the liquids um, and also this flashlight. 
The total price for this nail kit is $86 and I did find all of the nail shapes that they do offer. So they offer long square, long stiletto, long coffin, coffin XL, medium square, medium almond, and stiletto XL. So if you are a longer person, um, longer lover, nail lover, um, these not polished ones are definitely what I recommend to you. They do have a lot longer um, gel nail tips available to purchase, which I do really like because most gel nail tips are shorter nails, but with these ones, you do have some other longer options available. So the flashlight will allow you to do flash cures on your nail. Of course, it is just for flash curing. To do a full cure, you will want to have a larger nail lamp to be able to get a full cure. But that was everything they sent over to me. Thank you so much to Not Polish. I am very thankful and very blessed to receive all of these products. I can't wait to try everything else, including the dip and acrylic powders and also the long square nail tips. In today's video, I am going to be using the Press It Nail Kit using the Medium Almond Nail Tips. So off camera, I went ahead, I applied my peel off base coat and we're ready to begin doing the nails. If you want your nails to last, of course, you would want to go in with nail prep, including using that nail primer. I will leave a video link down below where I actually did the nail prep for gel extensions, showing some tips and tricks on really how to get your nails to last. Before this video, I knew it was gonna be a long one, so I decided to skip out on that. When I do use the um, other nail shape though that they sent, I will go ahead and show the nail prep for those ones. But for this one, I have my peel off base coat applied and I'm going in and sizing out my nail tips, of course, using the medium almond. When I'm sizing them out, I just make sure they fit from sidewall to sidewall without me needing to push it down. Like I mentioned, I feel like these nail tips are really great quality. They are a little bit thicker around the cuticle area than how I like my nail tips to be, but that's nothing that some filing can't fix. Of course, if you don't like to do filing and you just like to get a seamless cuticle, I wouldn't specifically recommend these nail tips just because it can be a little bit difficult. Another thing that I didn't mention when unboxing everything was that all of these products I'm pretty sure are sold separately. I know for sure that the press it glue is, also of course the top coat, the matte top coat, and probably the primer. You can also get the nail tips separately so you can buy the kit and also get different nail shapes. You don't have to buy a whole nother kit. The only thing I'm not really certain about is the nail lamp, but if everything else is sold separately, I would probably say that the nail lamp is also sold separately as well. So this Press It Nail Glue, it was a really good consistency. It was a thick consistency, but it was something I had to get used to. For most of the nails, I did use a little bit too much product. And with that being said, I do want to mention that when I use too much product in the nails, it doesn't touch on my skin on the underside of the nail. It actually just goes along the nail extension. I hope that makes sense, but sometimes I get comments asking if the under the gel under the nail bothers me, and it doesn't bother me at all because it's not touching my skin whatsoever. When you are curing gel products, you want to make sure none of that gel is touching your skin. So when you apply the nail tip and the gel is touching your cuticle, if it's touching underneath your nail, you definitely want to make sure you're removing that before curing your nails. So even though I said that it did take some getting used to, to using that product, I use a little much, it was still a very easy product to use. I just feel like recently I've been liking solid glue gels a little bit more but overall really good I did have to prop up that flashlight because it is just a normal handheld flashlight so it is a little bit difficult you'd have to prop it up on something to be able to do your flash cures but once I had all of the nails applied I went ahead and did a full cure in my new not polish Lux pro nail lamp for a full 60 second cure and now I'm just going in with a little bit of filing
Once I was finished filing, I took a dust brush to remove all of the nail dust and now I am going in with my base color on all of the nails. This nail set, I wanted to keep it simple but honestly, it took me quite a bit of time and I don't know how much I love the ending result just because I did do some nail art that I wasn't too familiar with. It wasn't really beginner friendly like I had thought it was going to be but still, I do really love the end result and don't worry. You will watch that in just a minute here, but first I'm going to apply my base color. So on all of the nails, I decided to go with a very dark, deep, dark blue color. I applied one coat of this and cured for 60 seconds in the nail lamp. I decided that one coat was good enough for me and I didn't really want to darken the color anymore. So I just went in with only one coat of this polish. This polish is from Madame Glam and it is a really good polish. I love the color. It is picking up very dark right now. But once I'm finished painting all of the nails and I do my cure, you will see the blue in this color. So here are the nails and that was only one coat of color, a very deep dark navy blue. I loved the nails. So I am going in with my airbrush here. I will eventually switch out the actual base of the airbrush because I realized that this one was dead and I plugged it in while mixing up the color that I was going to use and then it just wasn't charged enough and the cord was getting in the way. So I do really like that these airbrushes are rechargeable but I wish I would have really realized before that it was dead that way I could have charged it up but this one was dead so luckily I do have another airbrush base and I would just switch out this little container and switch it to the other airbrush which it was actually very hard to switch it without leaking any of the like gel out of it um, I was able to do it though, believe it or not, there is a hole on the top of the lid, but I closed up that hole with my finger, tilted it upside down, untwisted it, and then put it on the other airbrush like the same way while keeping my finger over the hole. It was a task, but I was able to do it without wasting any of this product in here. So I did want to mention that, that way you guys didn't think I wasted it. But it was very hard to transfer the little dish with the liquid in it from one airbrush to another. But I'm so glad that I was able to do it because this color that I mixed up was perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. I used a minty green, a true green, and also like a true blue color. I mixed those gels up really well and then I put in some rubbing alcohol. I believe I actually used rubbing alcohol this time instead of acetone. You can use either or though, both work. And then you would just want to mix that up really nicely. I decided to add a little bit more gel polish just because I knew that I was going to be needing to overpower that very dark blue that I had applied as my base color on the nails. So I added a little bit more polish just to make sure everything was opaque. I mixed it up and just made sure I didn't have any clumps of gel polish in there. The consistency you're looking for is a water-like consistency. You don't want any clumps. You just want it to be able to flow smoothly through the airbrush machine. 
Once I had that all mixed up, I cleaned it up and then closed the lid and then I unplugged it and then this is when I realized that it wasn't charged up enough. So like I mentioned, I just switched that over from one airbrush to the other airbrush and then I am going to be basically just adding a little bit of color to these nails, kind of giving them a Aurora effect. When using an airbrush and doing this Aurora effect, the easiest way I have found to do it is do each nail and just add a very light coat. Cure for 30 seconds, do a second coat, again keeping it a very light coat. Cure for 30 seconds and then keep repeating that process as many times as you need until you get that color built up the way you want the color to look. Keeping your coats very light and very thin is definitely going to help you just get a very smooth and clean Aurora effect. And I just repeated that same exact thing, keeping very thin light coats and curing for 30 seconds. It was a very easy process to do. Something you can also do is use some liquid latex around your skin. That way you don't get any gel on your skin. But I find that mixing it with the rubbing alcohol, it is very easy to clean up before or after curing because the gel polish is diluted. It is just really easy to clean up. After I had the Aurora effect, um, how I wanted it to look, I thought they, the way they looked right here, they were absolutely perfect. So I wanted to try out the matte top coat for you guys, just so you can see how well it looks. So I decided before beginning my nail art, I will apply the matte top coat. I applied that to all of the nails and cured for 30 seconds in the nail lamp. The matte top coat went on so nicely and after it was cured, it looked so, so good. I loved it. It definitely gave one of the best matte finishes to these nails that I have ever seen with a matte top coat before. So now for some nail art, I pulled out a dotting tool and also a liner brush and then I have my palette, which I use that white gel liner and just put some out on the palette. Using the dotting tool, I am actually going to be doing hibiscus flowers on my nails. These flowers have been very trendy. They are absolutely perfect for summer and I've been seeing so many tutorials, so many nail sets with these flowers on them. So I thought I would give them a try myself. Seeing all of the tutorials, looking at all of the different nail sets, it looked like it was going to be a super easy, beginner-friendly nail art design, but boy was I wrong. For me, these flowers were so hard to do. I love doing easy, quick nail art. Everything beginner-friendly is my best friend, and for these, I thought they were going to be beginner-friendly and easy to do but they were actually very, very hard. I did not do any practice um, drawing these or painting on these flowers. Everything that you're seeing here, this is my first time trying this hibiscus flower nail art. And I did watch tutorial videos. I was looking at different nail sets with these flowers on them, thinking again, like, oh, I can do that. And I feel like I did do it. I did complete the task. I did do the nail art on each of the nails. I think they do look beautiful and I think it turned out really nicely. But this took me quite some time. For the first two nails, I did keep it in real time obviously cutting out parts when I cleaned my brush or when I did something. I don't know really why I was cleaning my brush, but you know what I mean. Cutting parts out when I was kind of just looking at the flower, seeing what I could change. But for the last two nails, I did go ahead and speed those nails up just because I decided um, I don't really know what I'm doing here. It's not really much of a tutorial. I'm going to explain in a second the easiest way I found to do it. But for the most part, I was kind of just winging it, going along other tutorials that I saw, or just looking at a hibiscus flower that I found on Google Images. But the easiest way I found to do it was taking a very small dotting tool. I feel like that's another thing. Um, if you're going to use a large dotting tool, maybe do it on longer or 
bigger nails because these nails I had to keep everything so tiny because they were a shorter length so I took a very small dotting tool and then obviously there are five petals so I do kind of like a triangle with dots a dot on top and then two dots on the side and then I do that around five times to get the five different petals for the nail and then I will take a medium sized line art brush and use that to connect the dots and draw out the petals. I hope this is all making sense. Maybe it's just a little bit easier for you to follow along what I'm doing here. But you can see I place the dots for the petals in five different triangles just of dots. And then I'm taking that liner brush and drawing the petal, kind of connecting the triangle and the dots and then bringing it to the center of the flower. One thing that I thought looked the best was when the petals were not touching each other. For this flower here, I feel like it wasn't the best one at all. Probably the worst one out of all of the ones I did in the nail set. But I felt like looking at the flower, it looked better if the petals weren't touching each other. After I had all of the flower petals done, I then just draw the centerpiece of the flower, which was the easiest part, of course. So that's just a line coming from the center, and then at the end of that line, I just do some different dots to act as the pollen, and that was the easiest part. To help fill in space, I just went around the nail doing some different lines and some different dots just to make everything blend and everything come together. I feel like overall these flowers are a beautiful abstract hibiscus flower. They are not perfect by any means. This was my first time doing them. I didn't have any practice. I recommend if you are going to try this out, practice it first before doing it on your nails. Kind of get the hang of it because it is a little bit more intricate than it looks and then do it on your actual nails. I definitely recommend trying it. Do not give up just because I'm saying it's hard. I still want you guys to try it if you want to do this, but I would recommend practicing it first just to kind of get the hang of it and it might just make it look a lot better when you go to actually do it on your natural nails. So I'm just going to go ahead and let the rest of this play out. I hope that you guys will enjoy this nail art process. It was definitely a challenge for me, so I wanted to leave in all of the clips because I sat here and recorded everything, and I didn't want the footage to go to waste. So I'm just going to go ahead and let the last two nails play out. Once I am finished with the flower or the line and dot detail, I will go ahead and do a 30 second cure and then of course move on to the next thing. Like I said, just going to go ahead and let this play out. If you are still here watching, thank you so much for sticking around and watching throughout the video. I really hope that you guys are enjoying. If you are enjoying and haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Give the video a like. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're feeling generous, leave a comment below.
once I was finished with all of the nail art, I did go ahead and do a full 60 second cure to make sure everything was cured and I decided that I wanted to make these nails glossy. Looking back though, I feel like they would have looked absolutely beautiful matte, but I just wanted to stick with glossy since I am usually a glossy person. So I took the glossy top coat, applied that to all of the nails, and cured for 30 seconds. This glossy top coat was such a great consistency. Applying it over top the nail art smoothed everything out, made the nails very smooth. After curing, it was also very glossy and just made the nails shine very nicely making the um like aurora effect ombre in the background stand out and also make the nail art stand out after the top coat was cured i went ahead and applied my cuticle oil to nourish my cuticles and of course like i always say top off the nail set and here is the finished look of these nails i know that each hibiscus flower looks different but I was really trying my best. I feel like they still turned out really nice. To me, the nails look absolutely beautiful. I'm very proud of myself for not giving up and just keep going. Even though the nails didn't turn out as good as I wanted them or just look as good as I wanted them to look, I am still very proud of myself, especially because most of the times I stick with nail art that is very simple, very easy, and just doesn't take any time at all. So again, very proud of myself for sticking with it and pulling out this nail set and finishing it. I love the way these look. They definitely give off a Hawaiian summer vibe. I love it. I also just love that Aurora ombre in the background. I think those colors are so perfect for the flowers. They just give a absolutely gorgeous background. All of the products that I did use and mentioned and also show in today's video I will be linking down below in the description box. Like I said, I don't yet have a discount code with Not Polish. If I end up getting one though, I will be adding that to the description box as well. That way, if you guys do want to make a purchase, you will be able to save a little bit of money off your purchase. But here are the finishing shots. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. But as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.